Hello everybody, this will preface the video that's about to follow where I demonstrated how to vacuum fill your CLI-42 cartridges especially the ones that are not modified. In other words, you're able to refill them without any modification which means that you do not have a top refilling hole anymore or a plug. This is going to be the original untampered cartridge. Now there are two conditions that you may encounter when you do this. If you have your own cartridges and you have a resetter and you allow the cartridge to reach empty by the chip reporting, you will still have a relatively well saturated sponge. In other words, it will have several milliliters of ink still trapped within the fibers of that sponge. Now, if you buy a card from eBay that's empty, it will very likely come to you without the orange clip attached and it's going to be bone dry. Okay, so be very well aware of that. So you will have to experiment a little bit as to how much ink does it require to be able to refill to the correct level. If you have one of your own cartridges that you allow to reach empty, it may only take about 10 milliliters of ink to bring it up to full condition. And that looks like this. Okay, as you can see, a black one and a cyan one over here and they are filled to the max minus about 20% on the liquid side. And these, of course, are non-modified cartridges. And they were just refilled in the video that I will then show you next. Now, keep aware that as you proceed with this process, it's not, it's not going to be as easy as simply removing a plug and adding ink. It's going to require a process the key here is that you will be able to maintain the original hydraulics of that cartridge. In other words, how the ink was designed to flow. Because this is, this is a rather strange ink delivery system. It has a sponge which holds ink by capillary action and releases it through the exit port as required. And then allows the ink to enter and resaturate and maintain kind of a balance between the liquid side and the sponge side as you are demanding ink from it. So let's go ahead and jump in. You may notice that I made a couple of mistakes when I was refilling. The first time this was my first attempt doing this with the new updated system. And basically this is it. You have a holder that will hold your cartridge in place. A cartridge clip which you need to hold the cartridge and be able to seal the vent because you need that in order to be able to generate 100% vacuum. In other words, if you have any kind of leak of air, you will not be able to generate the proper amount of vacuum and the refilling simply will not occur. So the next thing is a syringe and I added this to it because I don't want the syringe attached to this. This is your compartment where you're going to load about 10 milliliters of ink, 10 to 11, depending on the condition of the sponge. And that's, again, experimental. It's up to you. You need to figure out what that will be. Okay? All right. So let's go ahead and jump into the video now. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you so much. Please consider this. It's just another option for you guys to be able to utilize. If you do not want to modify your cartridges, by all means, use this method. If you don't care and you want to use modified cartridges because that's what you're used to using, by all means, use that as well. We have links to empty, modified, flushed cartridges from Rick Johnson. And we will have links as well for Rudy Hallamum's system, vacuum refilling system. And don't forget, he also has these holders for your cartridges. And pretty soon, a PGI-72 holder for your Pro 10 and Pro 300 cartridges. All right, thank you so much. We'll be right back with the video. Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez back again. It is time to finally demonstrate the process of vacuum refilling CLI style cartridges. And those are usually Canon cartridges that have a sponge built into them, such as this. 
as you can see here this cartridge was allowed to go empty the person who then gave it to me had installed the orange cap on it so we are assuming that there's still a bit of moisture left in that sponge assuming of course that it did not dry completely through the vent hopefully not but there are ways to uh, circumvent that problem this one however is sad without a clip after it was declared empty we're going to see if we can actually refill this ideally what you would do is as your cartridges reach empty or are declared empty by the chip you would then proceed to refill them and that means that the sponge will never actually dry up even though it will have air in it the application of vacuum will displace those little air bubbles or the foam that's created by allowing air to enter the sponge which is what happens when you run the cartridge empty normally if you are refilling using the top filling method meaning that a plug was installed I don't want to take it out let me see if I can take this out easily here we go this is a yellow cartridge that I modified and also flushed it has a plug basically you run this until it is just before low you do not ever want to run out of ink on this side of the cartridge because then air will begin to infiltrate by filling your cartridge using a passive method such as top filling you're not going to be able to displace air so you want to keep that sponge as free from any captured air bubbles remember these sponges as we call them really are just packs of fibrous material it is hydrophilic material however if there is any air trap that air cannot possibly be displaced simply by adding ink to the liquid chamber and that will then slow down the ink delivery and you never want to do that at some point after several refills if you make a boo-boo and you go beyond the low warning in other words this has run out of ink and now you're infiltrating the sponge side with air then you will have to at, at some point after several refills you'll have to reflush the cartridge and start all over again so let's see what we need to do here so with the kit that you will receive from Rudy Hallamum on his eBay store you will receive this unit which was designed and 3d printed and this special holder the holder will be used to hold the cartridge in place as it is being located and sealed and ready for refilling let's go ahead and start with the one that was sort of protected we'll see we really don't know this is going to be a lot easier folks for those of you who refill at the point when the cartridge itself is declared empty so this that we are demonstrating here is really the worst possible situation a cartridge that you bought and it wasn't really treated nicely for refilling but it does feel heavy so in a way I think this cartridge still has moisture trapped in there yeah this seems a lot lighter I'm not gonna weigh them because it's really unnecessary but this definitely feels heavier so we have to install the special clip and of course you're going to insert this little tab through the slot and then click it in place this now has located the cartridge onto the holder at the correct orientation now here on the side there is a sealing pad that pad is what's going to seal the vent so we're going to go ahead and insert the cartridge in position like so it slips right in and now we are going to tighten the knob do not over tighten do it until it's about finger tight condition not forcing it you simply want to seal that vent and that's about right right there okay maybe a little bit more you just go until you feel comfortable and you're not going to strip any other threads okay so at that point that is now sealed now in order to be able to inject ink into the cartridge via vacuum we need a special little adapter this comes with the kit we're going to remove the lid basically it just pulls out it's a seal type uh, rubber type um, 
end. We're going to attach this to the lure lock on the holder. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and preload about 11 milliliters of ink, not more. Because remember, when you are refilling and you let your cartridge go empty, there is still about three milliliters of ink left in the sponge. Okay, not all of the ink will be evacuated when you print normally. So knowing that there's about 14 milliliter capacity to these cartridges, we're going to go ahead and just load 11. And that should fill it. Now make sure that you don't mess up. This is a cyan cartridge, which is dried. And I'll show you a little bit of a trick that you can do to sort of prep that so that it will accept the vacuum injected ink better. So we're gonna take our black, which is what we have here. We're going to load 11 ml. And it's great to have a little bottle such as this because that really helps. You don't really need a syringe. So that's about 11 right there, give or take. Now we're gonna go ahead and attach the seal. And again, you guys may be asking right now, wait a minute, this is really getting involved, Jose. And yeah, it is. It is a more of an involved process than just simply removing a plug and adding ink. All right, so what we have here is a 60 ml syringe. I decided to use a larger syringe than the provided 30 because I want to make sure that I generate enough vacuum so that this occurs, the refilling process occurs pretty much after just one attempt. So we're gonna pull back on the syringe. This will generate vacuum. Pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back. Pull back, pull back, pull back. We're gonna clean all of that later. And once you reach pretty much the maximum, you're gonna let go. And you will see ink entering. If not all the ink goes in, pull back once again and you should be able to get all 11 ml of ink inside that chamber. Notice, notice, and this is the most important thing, notice that the top of the sponge still remains pretty much unsaturated. Let's see what the liquid chamber looks like. That is perfect right there. That's the correct amount. All right, so let's go ahead and carefully, see I could have loaded probably less ink. So this is all kind of basically still guesswork. We need to figure out what is the proper amount of ink to load. I used 11, assuming that there was enough ink on the sponge still, but obviously I have too much ink in the reservoir. Let me try another attempt at producing vacuum here and possibly allowing some of that ink to enter. And that's going to be it, folks. That's going to be it. So let's go ahead and Release the vacuum. You would have to have, again, remember, this is not going to be easy like the refilling, the regular refilling method. But it will allow you to refill your original cartridges without any kind of a modification or any of the sort. And they will then perform as intended because the moment that you create a hole for you to refill, you will have changed the dynamics or the hydraulic dynamics of the cartridge, literally. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this, take it over to the sink, rinse it. All right, so I rinsed the compartment, dried it, rinsed the little hose, and now we are ready to remove this cartridge. We're going to go ahead and install a proper clip on it. And you'll have to clean this as well afterwards. And again, you see this is a lot more involved, but it produces the correct condition for refilling. Not that you're going to be able to tell performance decrease or whatever, doing it the conventional way that we have been doing it all along. Either way will work. So we're going to go ahead and remove this. We'll have to rinse this as well. All right, so I took it to the sink and I checked the ink flow. 
you may be able to notice that the vent is completely clear of any ink the compartment is near full this actually looks about the level of an OEM unopened cartridge this will be able to be used perfectly let's go ahead and do the cyan one because this is going to be a little bit more problematic than the other one and again what I am demonstrating here is probably the worst scenario you can come up with so let's go ahead and begin with this one this is going to be a little bit more like I said a, a bit more uh, difficult to do so we'll clip this on now I will have to do something a little bit different here because I don't know the condition of this sponge I'm thinking it's probably going to be pretty dry we'll go ahead and insert it we'll seal the vent and I'm only going to add about 10 ml maybe a little bit less than 10 just to see I, I just want to make sure that I don't oversaturate the cartridge so we'll go ahead and attach the compartment the little reservoir we're gonna add make sure we have cyan ink of course we're gonna add cyan ink about 10 milliliters of it that's about right we will attach the lid we give it a twist it's not a screw mount but it's kind of a press fit now we'll attach the tubing and this is something that I added he had the syringe actually um, attached to the uh, reservoir permanently I added a little piece of tubing which I think is going to prove to be a little bit better now we're going to allow the ink to flow into that port because that port I'm telling you that port has to be dry okay at this point so I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead and let that port become saturated to allow ink to flow better because it sat around for God knows how long unprotected uncovered and allowed to dry to the point where refilling might prove to be a little bit troublesome I have to admit so let's go ahead and begin to pull back I don't want to generate too much foam here remember these these inks are made out of a uh, glycol based type compound the liquid base itself so it's going to generate bubbles it's something that if you were to shake it you would get some foam build up I'm going to pull back slowly I'm creating more and more vacuum here when I get about maybe 30 milliliters worth of vacuum on the syringe I'm gonna go ahead and let go I just I just don't want ink to hit my my hose okay so maybe about this much and we're gonna let go and we will watch the sponge the sponge is becoming saturated at that point perfect ink is entering my chamber pull back again I don't think there's any danger now of any um, problems with uh, ink rising up my tube you can see the chamber saturating itself you can see the top of the sponge still white I'm going to pull back let that equalize and then let go keep an eye on the liquid chamber and again this is the only way you're going to be able to refill these cartridges and maintain that original level of uh, or hydraulic condition if you will all right so we're going to let that relax a little bit remember this sponge was bone dry before and I actually loaded a little bit less ink than I did in the previous example which it made a bit of a mess but the cartridge itself is perfectly refilled and that's all that matters all right so I think all of the ink practically has been ejected out of the reservoir I'm gonna pull back one more time there's a little bit of foam still in there and let go and I think that's going to be max that is max so we'll remove the tube for me to be able to do this, I had to add a little fitting, 
a little lure lock fitting, which you can purchase uh, off of um, places like um, Amazon. Remove this carefully. You need a little bowl or something to put this in or paper toweling so that you don't make a mess. We will undo the clamp, remove the cartridge, and again you can just continue doing this over and over and over until you have filled up numerous cartridges. We'll remove the clip and again you will have to rinse all of this stuff out at the end. So I know many of you are going to say, oh my god, this is way too involved. Well, no, not really. Once you get really good at this technique, you should be able to crank out these cartridges. As you can see right here, I am about eighth of an inch from the top. It's hard to see because of the ink has stained the sides and the vent itself is absolutely free of ink. So this is going to flow perfectly. Now, you could remove this clip and just hold it over a cup or on your utility sink and squeeze the sides and just drop a couple of drops of ink just to kind of test to see the ink flow. It should just drop when you apply pressure but when you let go of the pressure you should not get any ink dripping at all. And that will tell you whether the cartridge has been refilled properly so that it is balanced. If I take this off I should not get any ink dripping out unless I squeeze the sides. All right, that is about it. So now these cartridges have been already reset and they are ready to be utilized on your Pro 100. Now, can you do this on the Pro 200? Of course you can. You would have to get CLI 42s, swap the chip, simply because you want to sort of monitor what's going on internally here. The CLI 65s, I think that's the number for the Pro 200 are opaque, so it's very difficult for you to keep track of the actual refilling process. Here you can visually see what's happening. So that is it. Let's go ahead and rinse this. And that is it for the demonstration. It should be relatively easy. Again, I started with two ounces and I used up a little bit of ink. So I could probably refill maybe another eight tanks with that amount of ink and get it to the correct conditions again. And this will actually operate as if it was OEM. There will be no reduction or alteration in the ink flow of the cartridge, which is really, really important for the health of your printer and your print heads. All right, thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And until the next time, happy printing, everyone. Bye-bye.